Hello again everybody, welcome to CM42 TV and it's Wrestlemania season, it's Wrestlemania week Approaching on Wrestlemania weekend by the way, oof, can you believe it's happening already? Wrestlemania 38, I saw this on Twitter recently, do you remember at Wrestlemania 17 during the gimmick battle royal when the Iron Sheik is walking to the ring and Bobby the Brain Heenan says, um, by the time the Iron Sheik gets to the ring it'll be Wrestlemania 38 and I remember watching that in 2001 at Wrestlemania 17 just thinking that Wrestlemania 38 well, genuinely seemed miles away, a million years away, and here we are, everybody, 21 years later at WrestleMania 38. Tonight extravaganza, stupendous as the tagline, which, you know, you think it's just this typical tagline, and you hear the advert, and Pat McAfee is going, stupendous, and it's this big shout thing. And then you hear Vince talking about it. <laughs> he goes, when you hear the word stupendous, it's... It's bigger than life. You see, it's such a Vince McMahon thing. Here are my WrestleMania 38 predictions, everybody. I'm looking forward to the show. It's WrestleMania. Regardless of how much wrestling you watch throughout the year, regardless of how you feel about WWE, nothing is like WrestleMania. Um, WrestleMania weekend is so busy this weekend with stuff because SmackDown and the Hall of Fame is happening on Friday, but also we have AEW Rampage and Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, the return of each. All happening on the same day. Then we have WrestleMania Saturday, which is the first night of WrestleMania and NXT. And then we have WrestleMania Sunday. Re Sunday, by the way, is, is one of the busiest days of my life. So much on on Sunday, which is relatively annoying because it's a busy day Saturday. <laughs> but enough about me. Let's talk about the matches. Starting on night one, April 2nd, WrestleMania 38, night one, WrestleMania Saturday. What's going to be the opening match? I feel like a total, I'm a total geek for that sort of stuff. What's going to be the first match? You know what I mean? Who's the first entrance we're going to see and things like that? I believe it's going to be Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair kicking off night one. And I think Bianca Belair will win the title here. Why not? Why can't she win the title? She won it last year. Um, suppose if it's the opener, you know, Becky could still win. However, just with the whole way it's been going, uh, Bianca could really probably do with the title right now. She's been pushed really well, booked strongly. So uh, we'll go with Bianca Belair as my prediction to win the Raw Women's Championship as the opener of WrestleMania Saturday. Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio versus The Miz and Logan Paul. Very interesting. You know, we're not the biggest Logan Paul fans ever, but you know, he's doing a good job, I guess. You know, he's he seems like he's training, you know, to kind of have a good performance in the match and stuff like that. The things he did last year with like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, he took a really good stunner. Um, but yes, unless they have plans for Logan after this, Ray and Dominic will win this. Then we have Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin. Listen, obviously Drew's my boy, I love Drew. I used to say that Baron Corbin was my absolute least favourite wrestler. The human fast forward button, uh, so boring, no character, terrible wrestler, all that stuff, no character, apart from the lone wolf. Um, but now, one of my favourite parts of the show, one of the most entertaining characters, having Madcap. Um, yeah, listen, it's not where I'd, you know, I'd want Drew to be, it's not like the number one match on the show, but it's a good wee story, do you know what I mean? Two of them are really good performers, however Drew will win this one, nay bother. Then we have the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, the Usos defending against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. I'm using the microphone, that might have been horrendous in your ears. I apologise. Uh, I like the fact that, you know, this was definitely not in the works whatsoever, but someday they went, right, okay, um, we've got no more tag teams for the Usos to compete against. Shinsuke and Rick Boogs haven't had a title match, let's just do it at WrestleMania. But you know, it kind of feels special because it's not like Boogs wrestles often and, and Shin and, and Boogs don't really tag often. So I guess it's like, oh, it's a special thing for WrestleMania. But uh, yeah, the Usos will win this one and retain their titles, I believe. Then we have a really weird one, the New Day versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. Strange roster these days, man. Uh, Ridge Holland, obviously brand new. Accidental injury with uh, Big E the other week. Horrendous. Oh my god, so bad. Feels so bad for Big E. One of the one of the good guys is Big E. You know. Um. So yeah. Uh, but I know it was a total accident. Total accidental. You saw immediately when Big E landed from that suplex. Ridge was like immediately looking at him like, oh god, like all oh, he's okay. And I heard he was very like apologetic and stuff. You know, there's not these things happen. You know. 
you can't like hold a grudge against him forever. Um, hopefully Biggie's all right and comes back very, very soon. But it's Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston in the new day. Um, and I'm assuming that Sheamus and Ridge Holland will win this match just to continue that push. Sheamus has been doing some of the best work of his career and actually a, a, a underrated VIP, MVP even, of uh, the WWE roster right now. So, yeah. Then we have Seth Rollins versus an opponent of Mr. McMahon's choosing. Who's it going to be? It's probably going to be Elias or someone like that. I 100% believe Rollins is going to come to the ring and there's going to be a, like a, another, entr another, another entrance of someone that's not Cody Rhodes. And then Cody will come out after. I can't believe this story. I, 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 I'm downplaying it a lot because I've not really spoke about it on Twitter and stuff because it's so unbelievable. It's so crazy because I feel like, I feel privileged to have gone through the kind of formation of AEW and the and the build and the momentum of the Young Bucks and Cody and, and all in and, and that sort of Ring of Honor independent kind of period in about 2018 where it was just everything was growing and it, it reached a crescendo which was AEW. You know, we feel so lucky to have that now. It's our promotion, our company that we helped make. And then one of the executives... One of the people that was like, yeah, this is my company, has left and goes to WWE after, you know, all the stuff that he would used to say about how, he, you know, AEW is the dream place and stuff like that. And, I, you know, things are, you know, wrestling happens and things change all the time. I'm not saying Cody Rhodes, he's a hypocrite for going back. I would never say that. Things change all the time. It's all about, you know, he must have got a good deal, a good contract, good money. He's just had a daughter, you know what I mean? So um, it's just amazing that it's Cody Rhodes. You know what I mean? You just would never have assumed Cody was like the heart and the and the and the heartbeat of AEW, you know? Absolute insanity. I think he is a genius, by the way, for getting this done. And I do believe he'll be back in AEW as an even bigger star. So um craziness. Um so I believe it's gonna be Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. I did hear rumours of The Undertaker. Don't think so though. Unless it like Rollins is doing this thing on night one, Taker comes out, tombstones him, and he comes back out night two, and then Cody comes out, I don't know. And I also can't believe, if it is Cody, they're keeping it for WrestleMania. Like, I thought it would be a raw thing, you know. Crazy. Absolute insanity. But Cody will win this match. I can't believe it's happening. And seeing him in that ring will be mind-blowing. And then we have uh, the main event of night one, is uh, Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. I have been really let down and disappointed by this story. I like both of them, I guess, even though neither of them are particularly likeable. I think Charlotte is the absolute greatest. Um, but yeah. I think Charlotte should win. But Ronda probably will. There you go. Then, of course, the main event, the thing that's going on last is the KO show with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which will be incredible. I can't wait to see it. Kevin Owens is the man. Night 2, WrestleMania Sunday, April 3rd. A fatal four-way match for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Queen Zelina and Carmella, the champions, versus Sasha Banks and Naomi, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, and Natalia and Shayna Baszler. There is obvious questions to be asked about this, the, the booking of these titles in the women's division around WrestleMania time. Let's just get them all on the one thing. I understand why they do it, but they should also try and put some more time into more of them, you know? You think people like uh, Liv Morgan, Sasha Banks, Naomi and Rhea Ripley are four people that the fans love and are incredibly likeable. Um, so why would they not have their own spot? You know, that's the only thing I would say about that. But, uh, yes, Sasha and Naomi will probably win this as the biggest stars. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, you know, good lord. And uh, I've got a lot of momentum as well, so... You know, it depends who's sticking as a team after this. I didn't think Banks and Naomi would be, um, but looking at the list there, I guess they're the biggest names. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan could potentially stick as a team, so they could easily win that as well. Then we have a match that I think will be the absolute sleeper of the entire weekend, the one that people are sleeping on, and uh, I think will be great. Not the match of the weekend or anything, but it will be a great laugh and really, really good and really entertaining. Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville... And the Anything Goes match. Did you see the videos on Sami Zayn's Twitter? He's walking about the city of Knoxville, Tennessee, interviewing folk on his phone, trying to get dirt on Johnny Knoxville. Sami Zayn is the best. And Johnny Knoxville will win this match. However, it will be a, it will be a Shane McMahon-esque, you know, um, jump off the top of something. It's going to be a huge stunt that he's going to do. And it's going to be a spectacle. Speaking of Shane McMahon, 
very big possibility that Seth Rollins comes out night one and Shane McMahon comes out and then reveals Cody Rhodes as a we sort of like screwing with the fans sort of thing. Then we have Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory. What a strange build to this year's WrestleMania, man. Austin Theory getting this push. Good to see new folk up there. But it's like Pat McAfee, who is the commentator who I'm a big fan of. Um, it's just like, why is this happening? I've got no issue with it. I think it'll be a good match, like a very entertaining segment. And uh, I'm going to assume Austin Theory will win. But uh, McAfee will do a, a tope suicida or he'll do a Canadian destroyer which is now the equivalent of like a headlock and everybody will go I'm happy triple threat match for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championship I believe this match will open night 2 uh, another one that will be really good actually RK Bro defending against the Street Profits and the Alpha Academy tag team division on Raw has been great recently um, when's the last time Riddle's had a bad match Randy Orton does everything great uh, Street Profits are great and we want to smoke Otis is a good laugh but Chad Gable is the unsung hero of this, uh, and I believe um, the Alpha Academy will win this match, causing Randy Orton and Riddle to split, when one becomes two. And I'll have a feud going into the, the summertime with Randy Orton and Riddle. Edge versus AJ Styles. I always said, if Edge ever changed his theme song, I would be heartbroken and I would never accept it. However... Alter Bridge, if you follow the channel, you know my favourite band, or at least very near the top of my favourite bands. The fact that he's used another Alter Bridge song, and it's a whole change of character, he's a bit like Alistair Black. Um, I'm alright with it, alright? I'm fine with it. He, the, the Alter Bridge song, The Other Side, um, as soon as it, it, it played, I was like, oh my god, they've changed Metalingus, but oh my god, they've stuck with Miles Kennedy. Um, this will be great, it's a dream match, absolute dream match in 2009. When Edge was world champion and AJ was TNA world champion, I was like, imagine those two wrestled. And now two of them are better than they were in 2009. And, you know, they're having this match at WrestleMania 38. Crazy. But uh, I believe Edge will probably win this one because of the new character. But this match is not a one and done. This will continue into backlash and things like that. Big time and AJ will get the last laugh. But Edge will win this match at WrestleMania. Bobby Lashley versus Omas. Uh, this will be a spectacle. You know, um, I'm assuming Lashley's going to win. Um, but yeah, fine. I'm, I'm very impressed that Lashley got back in time you know, with the injured so shoulder. Um, and it keeps Omas in a big high-profile situation, which is good for him. And in the main event, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. I am not a fan of title unifications. I don't think it's a permanent thing. Um, I do believe there will be a champion on Raw and SmackDown going forward. However, just to make this match the biggest WrestleMania match in history, folk are saying that's nonsense, but when you think about it, it's not really. When has there ever been a title unification match like this in the main event of WrestleMania with two stars who are super over and the company has put all the build time into this one match? They absolutely have an argument for this match being the biggest in WrestleMania history. Yes, Rock and Hogan was absolutely huge. Rock and Austin, Rock and Cena, these are the biggest matches in WrestleMania history. Don't get me wrong, but this one should definitely be in the conversation. When you think about it logistically, and you think about it um, with the titles and the and the. Uh, also, there's lots of good matches on this show, you know, but not a lot of build and time has been put into a lot of them. The entire attention, and also a lot of the build for a lot of the matches have been like self self work. You know, Sami Zayn doing those videos on Twitter. Johnny Knoxville no noising everybody up. Pat McAfee on his podcast. Seth Rollins on social media, you know, teasing with uh, with Cody. The new music for Edge, you know. Um, obviously, there's things like the haircut for uh, Becky Lynch and stuff like that. Um, you know, and even like the Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey thing, I think a lot of the reason why the build has been very underrated is because so much of the attention has been put on Roman and Lesnar. That is the match that is the one that they are building to. We, we are being told, the company has told us as the fans, this is the match you need to care about. This is the main one. It's going on last on Sunday. Roman and Brock, it's a unification match and it's the biggest match in WrestleMania history. That is what we've been told to care about, you know. Um, so it's been a great build. It's been building since SummerSlam. You know, it's made lots of sense. Fate has come in the way. Like like uh, the thing with, with, with Roman getting COVID at day one and Lesnar having to win the WWE title. And then the Royal Rumble, you know, with uh, with, with Roman costing the title and stuff like that. All this stuff is kind of serendipitous and came to this moment 
and it's been a brilliant build. The issue is all the focus has been on this build and not enough been put on other matches. That being said though, it has to be Roman. It absolutely has to be Roman Reigns to win this match. Uh, I like Brock a lot. Babyface Brock, Cowboy Brock. This current version of Brock Lesnar is so much fun. Um, and, you know, he's, he's never been on TV this much since he came back in 2012. Like, this is as close as we're going to get to full-time Lesnar, and it's great. He's enjoying himself. He looks like he's enjoying himself. The stuff is fun. The reactions are good. Roman is on a completely other level. Roman is the best thing in wrestling, period. And uh, this match is absolutely deserving to get all the attention and being in the main event of WrestleMania. But it must be Roman Reigns that wins this. You know, this whole thing about how WWE are failing to build stars. Big E wins the WWE title and then loses it to Brock. Kofi Kingston wins the WWE title and loses it to Brock. Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar have this match. Lashley beats him because Brock loses in some other way because of Roman. There's all this stuff that's like, but it's Brock, but it's Brock. But Roman is already established, but Brock Lesnar cannot beat Roman Reigns here. He didn't beat him at WrestleMania 31, but again, Roman didn't win. Brock beat him at WrestleMania 34, which was an absolute shocker. Roman Reigns needs to win this match on Sunday. Big time. Big time. And yes, keep the title on Roman till WrestleMania 39 and put him in there with Dwayne. The I'll be there if it happens. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Brand new episodes of the Good Bit Podcast drop every single Friday right here in a video version on CM42 TV and all your favourite podcasting platforms. I post on over 20 platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, picking up a lot of steam and momentum. Thank you so much to everyone who's watched and listened. Definitely getting our biggest listener numbers ever right now. We're going to continue the mo momentum for the Good Bit Podcast going forward um, with brand new guests, brand new movie chat every single Friday. So I'd love to see you over there and I hope you enjoy WrestleMania 38 this weekend. It will be stupendous.